So in this video, we're going to look at how, from 1946 onwards, relations began to get worse between the USSR and the USA. Three key events in 1946. We've got a speech by Winston Churchill where he talks about an iron curtain dividing Europe. And we've got two telegrams that were sent, one from the USA, one from the USSR, and both of those escalated tensions. So we know that at the end of World War II and after the end of the Potsdam Conference, we know that there was tension between the USA and the USSR. And we know that if we look at this map of Europe here, we can see that it was becoming increasingly polarised. The countries that I'm drawing your attention to here, these are the satellite states. These are within the control of the Soviet Union. And thinking of this from a Western perspective, you can see the kind of encroachment into Europe that they were fearing. Europe was becoming divided into two spheres of influence, Eastern Europe falling under the USSR's sphere of influence and Western Europe remaining under USA or capitalist influence. If you look at Germany here, we've got East Germany, obviously, and in future videos we'll pick up what happened with the division of Germany there. But to get started, um, the key date for us in 1946 to begin with is the 5th of March. And on the 5th of March, in a place called Fulton in Missouri, you can see here, uh, just there, uh, Winston Churchill, not Prime Minister by this stage, gave a speech where he lit the touch paper for the start of the Cold War. He spoke of an iron curtain. Um, and his speech was at Westminster College. We can see a little picture of it there. He was invited there as a guest. No one knew what he was going to speak about particularly. And he was there because of his experiences in World War II. People wanted to know what he said. And what he said created further tension and led to a, a big kind of impact on events. Churchill said that the capitals of old Europe had fallen behind what he described as an iron curtain. You can see the cartoonist's impression of this here. Um, key to remember, it wasn't an actual physical division. It was a, a metaphor and it was a, an illustration of, of the division that he thought had taken place. But this highlighted to world leaders and to the populations in general that he felt that Soviet expansion and the encroachment of communism into Europe was something to be feared and to be worried about. Reaction to the speech was, was widespread. We can see a press report here. Um, Unite to stop Russians, Churchill warns at Fulton. And many people saw it as a call to arms. They saw this as Churchill launching an attack on Stalin. And that's certainly how he interpreted it. Stalin reacted incredibly negatively. And in a rebuttal speech, he said, in substance, Mr Churchill now stands in the position of a firebrand of war. He, he branded him a warmonger. And he said that he was not alone in his view as a warmonger. He said he has friends not only in England, but also in the USA. In this respect, one is reminded of Hitler and his friends. And that was a staggering comparison to make. And you can see here in this cartoon by a Russian cartoonist, that comparison made real. The idea that Churchill, by talking about the expansion of the Soviet Union, was on a par with Hitler would have been an incredibly... Um, loaded point to make, particularly given how close this was to the end of World War II. So tensions were raised between the two superpowers um, immediately following this speech, but they further were changed with the arrival of two telegrams. The first telegram was one known as the Long Telegram, uh, known as a Long Telegram because it was very long. It was 8,000 words long and came from George Kennan who was the American ambassador based in Moscow. He sent a telegram back because he was concerned that the Americans weren't taking the threat from Soviets and their expansion as seriously as they should. He was disgruntled, he felt he was ignored by Truman, and he wanted to make a point. And so he penned this 8,000-word letter outlining exactly what he thought the Soviet Union were up to. And he claimed that uh, Stalin had given speeches calling for the destruction of capitalism, there could be no peace with the USSR while it was opposed to capitalism. He claimed that the USSR was rebuilding their military power, potentially looking to launch another war. And he argued strongly that the USA should seek to contain communism. And containment eventually became the policy of Truman. So this initial argument in the long telegram that America should seek to stop the expansion of the Soviet Union is something that we can then see reflected in American policy. And we'll look at that in later videos. In exactly the same way that the Iron Curtain speech by Churchill had prompted a response from Russia, a similar response was sent by Russia to the Long Telegram. This is the residence in Washington of the USSR's ambassador, Novikov. And he replied with, with a telegram that 
went directly to Stalin, and it was concerning in terms of the points it made about the USSR and the USA. The telegram from Novikov, the Soviet ambassador, claimed that America wanted to dominate the world. It claimed that the American government wasn't interested in cooperating with the USSR, and he claimed that the American public were being brainwashed and prepared for war with the USSR. So both of these ambassadors really escalated the tension between the two superpowers. They gave reason to believe that the other was building up capacity to attack or to threaten them. And we can see the, the natural conclusion of this kind of escalating of tension in the Truman Doctrine. This is Truman here, and we'll pick that up in the next video.